enjoy singing. For it marks the first step that every student must take to grab the opportunities at the most important stage of their life. It is an honor to be here at this special event, which is the high point of the academic year. Because today we celebrate the accomplishment and academic achievement of the dear students. I quote Henry Ward teacher. Good. There are only two lasting requests we can give our children. One of these is roots and the other wings. Unquote. Most affectionately, we at SHS KJ Road present graduation day 2019, an incredible journey from roots to wings. Here to stand a student eagerly awaiting the crowning moment of the school career. Today is the day of successful culmination of 13 long years of steady, hard work and fun with their buddies. In the course of these years, they have passed from childhood to the brain of young adolescents and are in the prime of their teens. A special and historic day for all the proud parents present here and also for the teachers who can be recognized by the beaming smiles all around you. The emotions, beliefs, set of values inculcated into this youngsters standing at the threshold of the future has not occurred unaided. It is an accomplishment by the efforts, perspiration of the students and inspiration from the parents and by the skilled teachers. A nostalgic moment for the teachers who have molded them into the future youth of the country. The journey from the bud to a blooming flower, nurtured with aesthetic values which help them face the future with confidence and savor the richness life has to offer. Dear parents, outgoing batch of this year. Here they come, on our screen. Let's together cherish the effervescent smile as they come on the screen and enter the hall. The clock ticks fast, as so is the joyous moment. Ladies and gentlemen, let us rise to welcome a literati of today's evening. The generation next, the Gizmo generation, spirited sports players, Vivacious, agile young girls and boys, light-hearted, happy-go-lucky boys and girls, walking down the aisle with such grace. To our special guests, I request you to look around to capture the special smile on everyone's face. We are delighted to welcome you here today. Over to our system, Edwin Pisahim. Stuck in the road Time grabs you by the wrist Directs you where to go So make the best of this test And don't ask why It's not a question But a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable And in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what is worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable But in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life
here is a small token of our wishes on your path ahead children each one of you is unique and are brimming with the potential to the future einstein kalam and abhinav vindras of this country you have the potential to the focus point of this country may today be a memory that burns bright within you as you embark on the great challenge that lies before you may the almighty shower his choicest blessings on you all dear children we begin the evening proceeding by invoking the blessing of goddess saraswati the goddess of knowledge wisdom art music and nature the school choir will present the invocation invoking the blessing
principal head boy, Michael Mann, is also kindly invited. Thank you, sir. Born six decades ago, he has spent his life wandering, exploring, learning, and thinking outside the box. He shares only what he has learned from others, from the wisest and most respected masters. He talks or trains only when invited to do so, as he has all the time in the world and no commercial interest. He enjoys traveling, meeting new people and learning while he teaches. He writes books and columns. He speaks when asked to and tries to be genuine as possible in whatever he conveys. He listens and counsels only because he feels that every human being should be given a chance to improve his quality of life. His aim is to help he develop innumerable competent people so that he can become redundant and go back to make paper boats for the rainwater. He is none other than the eminent personality, iconic figure, a man of many words, Dr. Ali Dabanjara, who has consented to be a chief guest, founder and chairman of Banjara Academy, a unique institution committed to improvement of quality of life. Dr. Ali Kwaja, a Montessorian, an engineering graduate from Institute of Science and IIT Mumbai with a doctorate in behavioral sciences has always carved out his own path and has been a freelancer ensuring that work is joy every day. He is invited regularly to conduct workshops or lectures for defense, central government, prestigious national institutions, schools and colleges. He nurtures and motivates over 300 volunteers to give free service in 10 hospitals and at the academy's own counseling centers. He conducts a very popular and practical one-year part-time diploma in counseling skills and a six-month certificate in life skills. He has written over 30 books and 80 booklets on all practical aspects of day-to-day -day life and writes articles regularly in many reputed publications. His videos on Banjara's website is viewed by the people across the world. Above all, his prime focus is on empowering individuals to help themselves. Sir, a warm welcome to our institution on this special occasion. May I request our President Sir, Sri Madam Daulatram, to give a small memento to you as a token of our appreciation. I extend a warm welcome to our President Sri Madan Daulatram, Chairman KK Road, Sir Sri Sanjeev Atnaram, Honorary Secretary Sir Sri Arun Rajani, Honorary Treasurer Sir Sri Ashok Khandari, Honorary Joint Secretary Sir Sri Kiran S. Chavla, Chairman Hebbal Sir Sri Rajan Daulatram and his team of office bearers, members of the Managing Committee, School Governing Council and the Board of Management. Welcome to you, sirs. I also extend a hearty welcome to the executives of all our sister concerned institutions and all my colleagues. A special welcome to the parents, special invitees assembled here, and our dear students. Our president, Sir Sri Madan Daulatram, has been a guiding light for the growth of this institution. Under his vision and leadership, the school has grown from strength to strength and is now 
amongst the best academia in Bangalore. Truly an institution which nurses and inspires our students to be eminent citizens of India. I now request President Sir to share his vision and words of wisdom to inspire our passing out students. Highly learned uh, guest of the evening, Dr. Ali, my colleague, colleague office bearers, chairman of both the institutions, respected past presidents, respected principals, very learned teachers, a dedicated bunch of parents, and my dear Sindhians. As I stand before you today, it recalls me to the day when I graduated from school. Mixed emotions. All of you came into this institution not by choice. It was the choice of your parents sitting there that decided this school for you. And I'm sure they haven't gone wrong in that. Can we hear it for all the parents sitting here? for taking the first right step in your life. The Siddhi Seva Samiti has grown from strength to strength and probably today we can proudly say that this and we wish that this is not your last graduation day in Siddhi, high, Siddhi institutions if I am to say that. We can today proudly offer the outgoing batch of students, the courses which are available in other schools, other colleges and with the same Sindhian care and guidance. So I am sure all of you would consider being or continuing to be a Sindhian for the rest of your education because we now provide not only the pre-university education the degree, but even the post-graduation is there under the city umbrella. When I was wondering what to tell these outgoing batch of very learned students, something came to my mind and I would like to share one small story with you all. It's about being yourself. One question which is very frequently asked on a graduation day is, what are you going to do next? And all of you would be wondering, have I decided whether to take commerce or to take arts or to take science? That question is always there in your mind. But each child is different. Each child has special skills. Each child knows that what he is good at. So always follow your curiosity and go by your gut feeling and intuition. It will never get you wrong. This is a story of a small boy who was born to an unwed mother and due to social stigma, she wanted to give away this child in adoption. Her only condition was that the child should be adopted by very learned parents. So that was the only request she had and a couple was identified, a lawyer and his wife who were very learned to take up this child for adoption. When the child was born, the uh, parents who tried to adopt the child said no, they wanted a girl, but this was a boy. Then the round again started to search for another set of parents. And the couple which adopted this child were not very learned. So the mother put one condition that I will give away this child in adoption to you with the only uh, assurance that he will be a graduate and go to a good university and college. The child grew up 17 years down the years. The child was put into a very uh, high institution wherein uh, the entire savings of that couple was spent for the education of the child. 
the child join the university and within 6 months he wasn't enthused he dropped out because whatever was being taught to him was not going down his throat and it didn't gel with the entire thing so this child started looking around he stumbled upon a course which was calligraphy he started liking that the uh, word the way the words were framed the spacing between the words and the various fonts that were taught to him in calligraphy he did that course very interestingly he actually did a thorough course so that he mastered that thing. it did not matter to the child that how this art is going to be useful in his life years passed on 10 years down the line when this child invented the first Macintosh computer the calligraphy was introduced there this child was none other than Steve of uh, Steve Jobs of Apple all of you know him so do what inspires you what you like the parents can only guide you one request to the parents is most of the time we as parents feel that a child should do what we are doing and what we like him to do those days are gone wherein the children used to do what the parents would want them to do but today children are more smarter than the parents and they will definitely do a better job than the parents would like them to do so all the best I know there have been a lot of uh, advices and uh, uh, I, this is a time wherein the advice is freely given and most of it would always go over your head. So enjoy the moment, don't be bothered too much about your study, look at it as just one stepping stone to success in life. The success in the 10th is important but it is not the end all of the world. A big thank you to the teachers for really bringing the uh, students to this level so have a wonderful life ahead and live every moment of it thank you thank you sir for the kind words of encouragement and blessings i am sure that the students and teachers have taken note of the positive vibes provided by you sir yade school ki wo lamhe jab hum school mein padhte hain tab sochte hain kab bade honge kab school se chutkara milega लेकिन जब स्कूल से निकल जाते हैं तब हमें एहसास होता है स्कूल लाइफ इज द बेस्ट टाइम ऑफ लाइफ दियर चिल्ड्रन वी नाउ टेक यू डाउन द मेमोरी लेन अ फ्यू ब्रीफ ग्लिम्सेस ऑफ योर ग्रोथ इन आर स्कूल विद अस दीज आर अ फ्यू मोमेंट्स टू चेरिश फॉर अ लाइफ टाइम ओवर टू हिम एंड सर
It is motivational, fabulous, lovely, nostalgic, spectacular, fun-filled, mesmerizing, amazing, inspiring, crazy, magnificent, next level, memorable, wonderful. Thank you. Yes. 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 Shall we children? How was the Josh? How is the Josh? How will be the Josh? Keep it up. Accountability is needed today for tomorrow's success. The traditional education system based on the concept of knowledge transfer, the age-old Guru Shishya Parampara, the digital media and the internet has ushered in a collaborative self-driven enterprise. The institution of teacher-student relationship remains a sacrosanct pillar of the education system, a beacon which inspires and connects and prompts students to exploit the digital resources gainfully. While the digital age will positively impact all forms of education, it cannot replace the human interface which is so vital to the social moral and emotional development of the child. Schools are supposed to be preparing students to go out on their own and be successful in their lives. On this note, we have Shreya Ennis of Class Sensei who will share her thoughts and feelings with you. I quote Albert Einstein, Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. Unquote. Honorable Chief Guest Sir, Dr. Ali Kwaja, President Shri Madan Dala Cham Sir, Chairman Shri Sanjeev Atmaram Sir, Honorary Joint Secretary Shri Kiran Chawla Sir, Honorary Treasurer Shri Ashok Khandari Sir, Honorary Secretary Shri Arun Rajani Sir, Members of the Governing Council, all the office bearers of Sindhi Group of Educational Institution, Principal Ma'am of Hebal Branch, Mrs. Maitrai Satyadev, Vice Principal Ma'am, Mrs. Chitraleka, Mrs. Rachna Sharma, our Principal Ma'am, Mrs. Devika Khirin, Vice Principal Ma'am, Mrs. Alpana Kala, Chief Operating Officer Ma'am, Mrs. Ratna Kumari, Distinguished Guests, Teachers, Admin Staff, our beloved parents and my dear friends, a very good evening to you all. I would like to congratulate the class 2018-19 of SHS KK Road who are all filled with mixed emotions today. Our journey was very exciting as we were a part of Silver Jubilee as well as Diamond Jubilee celebrations of this esteemed institution. With the support of our God Almighty, parents, teachers and friends, we have made it to this day and to the beginning of the new stage of life. Where we go from here, what new frontiers we are going to discover may remain unseen. But as we walk out these doors tonight and stare into the first light as what has to come, we shall always remember this night of victory, our graduation day. An episode of life is over and perhaps an important one. The greatest happiness 
is that it wouldn't have been more memorable. I would like to thank the teachers who gave me an opportunity to serve as prefect and for all the support and encouragement. 13 years ago, I remember the day I entered the imposing gates of Cindy High School, perplexed, clutching my mother's hand who had prepared me well not to cry. Neither was she successful that day nor will I be today to hold back my tears as it is not so easy to part from this temple of learning. Leaving school seems like leaving a part of me behind. All the joys of childhood and adolescence that will never ever come back again. Leaving behind those mornings when we would drag ourselves to assembly and then spin back to class. Leaving behind those times when we would congregate in the school canteen at break times to gossip with a plate of delicious samosa. Leaving behind both those sleepy afternoon classes as well as excited buzz of school activities. Leaving behind the basketball, table tennis games dances and especially time spent with a group of friends just doing whatever. Today, I am a part of history of this glorious institution. Education I have received may take me far across the seas, but will I ever leave Sindhian in spirit? Of course, no. Today, I am with a heavy heart yearning every moment to remain in this place, the place which is my home. The years spent in school have been a glorious experience. We will all look back to them with wistful longing and thrill. As great a night this is for you graduates, it is a great a night to our parents. They may seem calm and collected as they sit in the audience, but deep inside, they are doing cartwheels, dancing with joy and brimming with pride. Each one of us have experienced a mosaic of emotions, triumph, elation, determination, the pranks of adolescence and the power of knowledge. But today, we stand before you, matured young citizens, ready to face anything that this world can show at us. Each and every single person with whom we have come in contact in this school is responsible for this transition in us. We are really thankful to them. With such dedicated personalities backing us on, we are sure to succeed in all our endeavors. They truly deserve all the commendations they can get. I'm going to miss our pre-primary teachers who laid the foundation stones for what we are today. Our primary and middle school teachers who instilled the love of learning in us. Our physical educators, art, music and dance teachers have always stood by us and have encouraged us for various competitions. Our high school teachers who prepared us to take our first steps towards the competitive and unfamiliar world outside. We are really grateful to the teachers who are an integral part of the growing up years but have left the institution. Thank you teachers, we are really sorry if we have unknowingly hurt you. I quote Lauren Conard, There is never just one thing that leads to success for anyone. I feel it is always a combination of passion, dedication, hard work and being in the right place at the right time. Unquote. At this point, I wish to express my heartfelt gratitude towards the admin staff and support staff. May I request Manjula Ma'am, a valued member of the admin staff, to accept a memento from my friends Kushal Rajpal and Ramya Shri. Thank you ma'am. Thank you friends. May I request Mrs. Devi, a valued member of the support staff to accept a memento from my friends Gayatri Karthikeyan and Gaganam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, friends. As students of Shakespeare, we may rattle off things about parting being as sweet sorrow. But I am not sorrowful today. I am not afraid to step out and face the challenges, for I have a glorious set of values and ideas backing me. 
I know that wherever I go from today, I'll be a true Indian. I'll be a winner and hence true to myself. To paraphrase Richard Bach, don't be dismayed at goodbyes. A farewell is necessary before you meet again. And meeting again after moments or lifetimes is certain for those who are Indian. Signing off, Shreya Ennis. Three cheers for Indians. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. Thank you, Shreya. It's truly heartwarming. We wish you the very best to face the challenges in life ahead. God bless you. As the child's first teachers, there are many things that parents can do within their home to make it a good place for learning. The parent needs to be a positive role model for the child in helping to shape the child's opinions and attitudes of her learning as they are the most influential persons in their lives. High self-esteem and student achievement are closely related to positive parental involvement in school. When parents get involved at school, it can be a motivating factor for the child and the institution. Building effective partnerships between parents, families and schools to support children's learning leads to improved learning outcomes and providing them with the skills to do so. We at SHS make it a point to give the right impetus to parent-teacher relationship to ensure that the future of our students is not compromised and there is course correction at appropriate time whenever there is a deviation. We thank the parents for this continued support. We now have Mr. Sri Hari V. Kulkarni, father of Shalva Kulkarni, of class 10 B, sharing his experience with us. Over to you, sir.
this energy levels but not knowing what to do. As Sir Ailey pointed out in his speech, that whether to take up science or arts or commerce. The good thing now is we have a lot of career opportunities in this field. Unlike during our times when if you were to say that, Dad, I want to do arts, and you want bonkers. So this was the kind of approach that you had to take up science. You could either become a, an engineer or a doctor. You had very limited opportunities. You were always told that government jobs are the best. If you try to think about any other sector, have you gone bonkers? So even after 15 years of service in a quasi or in an institution owned by the government of India, when I said, let me go back and see the sector which is driving on the private sector side, again the same question. Have you gone bonkers? I was then 40 years old. So fortunately, parents have evolved. System has evolved. We have a lot of many opportunities. Whether you take up science or arts or commerce, I would rather suggest as a parent cultivate a scientific temper, learn to appreciate the finer arts in life. And commerce is surely important because resources are going to be limited. You cannot work with unlimited resources. So you have to know how to optimize those resources and only commerce can teach you that. So whatever field you take up, you will surely have an interface. months or probably some of you would be eligible to vote also, right? So you'll be choosing lawmakers, you'll be choosing government staff. That's the kind of responsibility which is coming on your uh, shoulders. Nothing to worry about, like what my daughter normally does me whenever I get worked up, dad, take a chill pill. So nothing to worry about, take a chill pill. It's not that we want you to start proving things right from day one, overnight. But yes, you have to understand the framework of Life. Decisions which aren't very close to your heart, do something which is very close to your heart, but at the same time, don't trample upon the emotions or suggestions of your kids and dear ones. Be it your elder sister or your brother or your parents or your grandparents, at least listen to them. You may not follow what they tell you, you need not follow what they tell you, but surely lend a ear because. They are the ones who have seen a lot of these summers and winters and So they say that the sun is not coming, the sun is not coming. So you can listen to the sun, you can listen to the sun, but what you want to say, 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 what you want to say. But more importantly, even if you take decisions close to your heart, learn to own up the consequences of it. That is very, very important. Whenever things go wrong, don't try to find an external agency to blame. Whenever something goes wrong, you have to just keep calm and be composed mind and try to improve, consider these challenges and adversities as great lessons in your life, you know, uh, taking up decisions in your life. Take them as learning courses rather than as any setbacks and, you know, go into a So no need to go into depression, there is no need for you to feel tense about things, your entire life is ahead of you. There is no need to get into peer pressure, that he has gone to that school, I have to go to that school, he has taken up that course, I have to take up that course, he has joined in courses, I have to join in courses. There is no need for you, each one of us is very very unique, so let us retain that uniqueness. For parents, it is going to be a challenge in terms of moving away from an ecosystem wherein we had, we were very obedient, of course, even today we are obedient, whether it was to our parents, now it is to our parents, okay. So, we still continue, that generation continues to be obedient, but then we don't expect you to be that obedient the way we are, but at least respect the obedience of others, it may be contrary to what you feel, but then your job is surely to listen, and make your decisions accordingly. I would like to put a small story here. It's a time to tell you all. It's a time to tell you. So, when we say, talk about challenges and adversities being two teachers in our lives, nothing can teach you much better than adversities and challenges. One day a priest was walking along the road and he saw a small cube. You know, you have those 
larger than strike to you know when they go into a butterfly or whatever it is. So this pupa was literally struggling. So the gentleman, because of great sympathy, because of great concern for the creature, he went and took a small blade and in a way that it doesn't hurt the pupa, he slowly cut open the covering so that it could not fly. But after some time, another person walking along and this person was feeling very bad. Where did I go wrong? Did I cut it in the wrong place? Did I hurt it? Did I kill it? Unknowingly. So the other person said, the very struggle that the pupa was undergoing to come out of that cocoon was its way of strengthening its wings. By cutting it, you haven't given an opportunity to strengthen the wings of the pupa so that the butterfly could fly. Adversities are precisely the way to strengthen I never had my photograph in my school. I feel very proud that I have it in my son's school. So. <laughs> so let these adversities become an ability to strengthen your wings. It was the earlier slide which said the theme of today's function is roots to wings. So have very firm roots, stay grounded, but hold your head very firmly high in the air. Take off, but with very strong wings. Before I end here, I would like to suggest a balanced approach towards life. Sometimes you may feel like indulging. Sometimes you may feel like you know you you find this habit amongst kids, especially when you study long hours, nine hours, eight hours. Of course. People is not laughing if somebody says that he studies for nine hours, but we have this tendency to study for nine hours for two days, continuously, and then sleep for the next three or four days. So this just won't help you, it just doesn't work. So have moderation in everything. And I feel very tempted to quote a couple of shlokas from the Bhagavad Gita on this. The twelfth of the eye which deals with Bhakti Yoga. It's the, it's the definition of a Bhakti, a, a true devotee to the Lord. But then you can take that as an important lesson in life. How do you really maintain a balance? समशत्रोच मित्रेच तथा माना पुमानो समशत्रोच मित्रेच सो बी इक्वली डिस्पोज्ड टुवर्ड्स योर फ्रेंड्स इन द रिंग तथा माना पुमानो इवन मान एंड अपमान ऑनर और इवन क्रिटिसिज्म और इंसल्ट्स हैव टू बी टेल टू बिफोर शीतोष्ण सुख दुखेषु समस संग विवरुता शीतोष्ण शीत एंड Don't be overjoyed during happiness. Don't be down in the dumps when you are not so happy. I won't say sorrowful, but not so happy. Samasanga vivarajitaha. Stay away from those companionships or associations which don't work for you. Tundaninda smutri mauni santushto yena yena chit. Try to handle ninda and smutri and remain silent as much as you can. Nowadays you say, you know, the more you talk, the more learned you are uh, considered. But that's really not the case. Like they say, you know, uh, I assume he was a very learned man to open this mouth. So, let us avoid being that. It's good to be assumed that you are a very learned person rather than spoil the impression by talking something rubbish. So, silence also teaches you to observe. Silence also teaches you to gather your thoughts properly and then so don't rush into saying something before you even thinking and have a very very balanced approach life. Of course, situations will be the best guides to you. We can only share our experiences with you. Life is really out there. Explore the world. Go beyond your comfort zones. There is no point in being in a cocoon life because that really doesn't take you anywhere. Explore your world on your own. Learn from your mistakes. Commit mistakes. Don't commit the same mistakes again and again. But committing mistakes is not a bad thing. So, these are a few words of advice. As much applicable to be parents as much as you. So, it's not a question of talking from this angle, but it's as friends, as good friends with you. So, here's wishing you all the very best. Cherish every moment of today's evening, the past 13 years. Who said 13 is an unlucky number? It's an extremely lucky number. 
13 years or solid foundation really really set your uh, goals high your aims high and you really have a fabulous journey ahead stay in touch with friends keep on meeting and here's wishing you all the very best take a chill pill thank you thank you sir for sharing those wonderful words we thank each one of you for the constant support and encouragement happiness does not come from doing easy work but from the afterglow of satisfaction that comes after the achievement of a difficult task that demanded our best. May I now request the Chief Guest Dr. Ali Kwaja to address this august audience and share your experience and wisdom to inspire our passing out students to achieve greater success in life. 13 years you have been listening to lectures. This year even more so. Because everybody said board exams, left, right and center people were giving you lectures, not only teachers, started with Amma and Appa, went on to Ajji and Tata, went on to the milkman, went on to the neighbor, everybody said board exams. Even today, unfortunately we don't seem to be stopping, so I will stop, I will allow you children as Mr. Kultani said, take a chill pill for the next few minutes. Today I am going to give a lecture to your parents who keep pushing you to school. Okay parents, there was a survey done recently by a very eminent psychologist that small children, you know, toddlers are told the words no, don't, veda, nahi equivalent of those words between 50 to 100 times in a day that is how we nurture our children we spend a lot of time restricting our children and telling them don't do this, don't do that, don't play games, don't be with friends, don't do this. But we don't tell them what actually they should do and why they should do. Teachers do their duty, they do take up their responsibility and teach each one of these subjects thoroughly. As parents, have we told our children why they need to study? Do we tell them that this is how this study is going to help you? 13 years they have been dumped with studies. They started with 1, 2, 3, 4. They learnt up to 100 and they thought, oh great, now I know up to 100. Then you said 2 plus 2 is 4. Then they said subtraction, borrowing. Then multiplication. And then that famous long division, one line like this, one line. I don't know how many of you parents can do that long division, I can do it. My teacher was so good, maths teacher. 30 years down the line, I can still, you wake me up from sleep and give me long division, I can do it. But parents, my question is this. When was the last time that any of you actually took a piece of paper and drew those lines and did that long division for any practical, useful purpose other than to make life miserable for a kid? So what does it mean? Does it mean this education is useless? Not at all. President Donald Trump gave you the example of Steve Jobs. You have also heard of Bill Gates. All of your parents have heard about Bill Gates. Great man, no? Became the richest man in the world. CEO of Microsoft. Led Microsoft for years and decades. Became old. And then he said, let me hand over the baton to somebody else. I am sure the best of candidates from the topmost universities of USA, UK, everywhere must have aspired to get that CEO of Microsoft job. But today do you know who is actually the CEO of Microsoft? Satya Nadir. Born and brought up in Hyderabad. Above average student, not a top. I don't know how many times his father kept telling him study, 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 study. But he never made it to the top. 
gave entrance exam could not make it to IIT, NIT, VIT, any of those. So somewhere they found that in neighboring Karnataka, there's a place called Manipal and there's one engineering college there, so put him there at least he should become an engineer. Did his engineering from Manipal Institute of Technology. And today Satya Nadella is the CEO of Microsoft. What makes these people? I want as parents to please reflect on it because this is the time when your child is stepping out of school and is going to take some very very important decisions. I hope you are going to allow him or her to take decisions. I hope you are not the type who will say, software engineers make the best money so go and become a software engineer. Appa will say that. You know what Amma will say? There is no doctor in the family so you become a doctor. I have worked so hard and I have set up this business for whom? For you. So you study commerce and take over my business. I mean, you set up your business before I was born. How did you know I am going to be born and take over your business? So somewhere along the line, let's understand that. Let me give you another example, very interesting example. There is another person who has made it very big in the uh, USA. Not in but in academia. Harvard University's College of Management, I think it ranked as number one in the whole world. For the first time, a non-American became the dean of Harvard. His name is Nitin Nodia. He was my junior in IIT Bombay. He studied chemical engineering. When he was appointed uh, the dean of Harvard, the media asked him, you come from India, you studied in some IIT there in Bombay, what? What did you study there that brought you to this level where you could become the Dean of Harvard? Nitin said, studying chemical engineering for five years in IIT Bombay taught me that I don't want to be a chemical engineer. People laughed at him, I did. I knew exactly what he meant. That is what is true learning. And that, we have to give it to our children. The textbooks don't give it. The lectures don't give What we call as basic life skills, it is our response. When you put a seed in the ground and the seed sprouts, you take a lot of effort. You put water on it, you protect it from animals, you do the weeding, you do put insecticide, you keep doing everything and now the tree is growing. And imagine suddenly if you would say, I have planted a mango and the mango tree is coming. But nowadays there is no scope for mangoes, scope is for apples. So I will send you for coaching, you better uh, start producing apples. The tree will neither produce apples nor mangoes. But that's what we do with children without realizing. Please take this as a very important crossroads of your life. Help your child to understand where he is headed, what he is doing, what is the basic purpose of his life. He is going to be a great citizen of this country. The other thing is, as Mr. Kuskani was saying, we have experience. Aha. Once upon a time, experience used to be the in thing. Without experience, you don't get anything. Let me assure you, parents, in this generation, experience is going to be a dirty word. A 24 year old software engineer loses his job, he gets a better job in 3 days. A 44 year old software engineer loses his job, it takes him 3 months and he has to work for another salary. A 54 year old software engineer loses his job, he may as well go back to his village and do farming. That is what your experience is. Why? Because these children are the first generation of what we call as Digital natives. All of you, including me, we are digital migrants. We were not born in a digital world. We migrated into a digital world. These children were born into the digital world in the 21st century. Now, who knows better, the native or the migrant? If somebody is born and brought up in Bangalore and in this locality, and another person is born and brought up somewhere and shifts into this locality. 
who knows more who has got better knowledge and better information the native not the migrant so kindly change your attitude tell yourself that i want to learn from them i am going to allow these children to prosper to grow to blossom out because one thing i can assure you as mr kutani also said there is no career now which if you are good at it you will not make money in. that is the beauty of our great country the way india economy and the way development in our country has evolved and forget about india these children are going to be global citizens 10 years from now your child may be work, work, sitting in some uh, uh, he can be sitting if he wants in uh, chikbalapur or chikmagalur and work for an american company his boss ceo may be in england his supplier may be in africa and his customer may be in singapore that's how the global village is evolving you don't even have to think is there scope in this or will he make money in this or anything of that sort if he is good at anything he will not only make money he will be a happy citizen he will be a happy person and as i told you it is wonderful to see the way our country is evolving opportunities are endless and you know who is the person who does exceedingly uh, well a person who looks outside the box that's why i gave you nitin norya's example that just because i studied chemical engineering i am not going to be stuck as a chemical engineer i am going to be beyond in fact i have my colleague there is a ah there is a the man my colleague dr vishwesh studied mbbs became a doctor then everybody says mbbs is not enough you should do post graduation and post graduation from where best country is uk went to uk got his post graduation what should he have been doing sitting in a hospital writing prescriptions or doing surgery right he is now working for a multinational company where he advises them on the medical products that they make from the point of view of a doctor see the variety of possible work what you enjoy doing what you have pleasure in doing 20 years back no doctor was ever working in this sort of things this is what is happening today we have to take advantage of it i do a lot of work for the indian air force i was very privileged to be there three years back in the air force academy then the first six girls were selected to become fighter pilots three of them have already completed that training they have become flight lieutenants they are flying supersonic jets which are fighter jets they are going to defend our country if the enemy attacks 10 or 20 years back people would have laughed if a girl said i want to be a fighter jet pilot today you have that example in front of you this is what your children are going to be this is the world that they are growing up in let us not stop them let us allow them to blossom out let us identify their talents i agree with you many of us think that what do you know a lot of children say things like it's my life i decide what i want to do and parents get very angry when they say that stupid keep quiet what like you don't know what you're talking about to a certain extent i would say yes if you say that my child doesn't know what's good for him who's fault is it because i was supposed to help my child to understand what's good for him did i do that responsibility in this 13 years did i tell him that one fine day the day will come when you will have this uh, you know uh, graduation and you will fly out from here the roots are strong the wings are strong which direction to fly in can be taken the trouble of telling him and how do you do that explore show them the world to introduce them to a friend who is a banker let them meet somebody else who is an architect Let them meet somebody else who runs a taxi service. Introduce him to a software engineer. Let them see the world and find out what is happening in the world. Explore along with them, and then and then only you will be able to give them what they really need. This is a very momentous occasion. I am not going to stand between you and the great evening for these children, but I would 
definitely and sincerely want you to keep this small message in your mind. And to be able to do that, there are only three things I got to leave you with. Three very simple things. Number one, communication with your child. Please work on communicating. If you don't do it now, by the time your child goes to college, he will not be interested in you. He will not talk to you. This is your last chance to improve your communication with your child. And you know what is communication? How is it spelled? There must be some good English teacher here. Spelling of communication. Spelling of communication, according to my teacher, is L-I-S-T-E-N. Please listen to them. Number one. Number two, consistency in whatever you say or do, including discipline. Don't change rules every day. Children get very good. Decide beforehand and tell them this is on, this is not on. This I am being flexible, but here I am going to be with you. Don't confuse them further. There are enough things to confuse them already. The third is, I think, uh, that be a good role model. Children are very poor at listening to their parents. They are very good at mimicking them. They will see what you are doing and they will do. They will not listen to your passion and do what you tell them to do. Keep that in. Okay, since I have sounded a little harsh on the parents, let me wind up by telling you there is no such thing as perfect parenting, ideal parenting. We all make stupid mistakes. Like how some children who are not good in maths, how they make stupid mistakes and because of that they lose marks. No? We do the same thing in parenting. So don't get upset if you find that you made a mistake or if you have not done something. Correct yourself and go ahead like how you practice your maths. Five times you practice that sum and then you start doing it. Five times you practice your parenting and you will start doing better. I learned that lesson many years back when my children were small. Normally I don't, those days at least I never used to take up any assignment on Sundays to spend time with the family. One particular Sunday, there is this very respected Swamiji, he said, I want to do a parenting workshop and fathers normally don't come unless it's a Sunday, so I want you to do it on Sunday. I couldn't say no to him, I went. It dragged on a little bit, I got delayed. Late afternoon, I reached back home. Both my children were sitting there. And the elder one looked at the clock and said, is this the time to come home on a Sunday? I said, hey, I didn't go roaming around with friends or something. I had gone on work. What work? Office is closed. I said, yeah, office is closed. But I had gone to do a workshop on parenting. I said, workshop on parenting? What do you do? I said, teach parents how to be... You have to teach parents how to be good uh, parents. I said, yeah, we have to teach them. What do you teach? Before I could answer, the younger one said from the other side, he must have gone there and told all the parents, be good parents, love your children, look after them, be good to them, don't leave them on Sundays and go for parenting workshops. Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement. What better way to put it, sir? Thank you, sir, for the optimism, kind words of encouragement. I am sure a student will draw inspiration from your words to achieve the highest pinnacles of glory. I now request our chairman, Sir Shri Sanjeev Atmaram, to present a memento to the chief guest of the evening who has paid his valuable time to spend this evening with the future youth of the country. He has been graceful in sharing his experiences and encouraging the students to go out and achieve and soar to greater heights. Thank you, sir. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. It is true, nothing succeeds like success. Success silences all adversaries and critics. Success actually does not come easy. It can only be clinched after a long struggle, perseverance and untiring endeavors. The road to success is riddled with challenges, failures and disappointments. Success is like a degree a student is awarded after years of studies. And once success has been endured, 
It helps people in almost all areas of life. Success brings along other lucrative opportunities also. Thus, a ripple effect of favorable events and opportunities is created. I now invite the head boy Suhas Jagwani and head girl Sharanya Venkatesh to address the August gathering. Good evening to one and all present here. A warm welcome to you all. A hearty welcome to our chief guest, Dr. Ali Khwaja sir, dignitaries, parents, teachers, school executives, and my dear friends. Firstly, congratulations to the batch of 2018-19. As much as we don't want to admit it, we are all growing up. School's getting over, guys. But that's not exactly what I had in mind while writing this. I still remember my first day of school so vividly. I entered the premises and remember feeling on edge that day. The prospect of school is so exciting. I told myself. But by the end of the day, I ran home as fast as I could and tried myself to sleep, refusing to come back. Well, once upon a time, 13 long years ago, our journey began. We were obedient little thoughts climbing huge staircases with heavy bags. We were completely oblivious to anything outside the four walls. Okay, now let me explain before you form your own opinions. It was the first time that I had been away from my mother for three whole hours. So you can imagine how terrifying school would have been for me. But I eventually started liking school. The new faces, the new friends, the classrooms. School has certainly become amazing now. Soon, this place really did become our second home. What more could be asked for in a family than mother-like teachers and cheerful friends? To me, school life is a burst of rainbow colors in the sky of opportunity. I've grown up from a young joyful toddler to be a leader, a writer, an artist and a dancer. Through every possible way, I was taught not just the content in our textbooks, but life lessons beyond. The exposure and opportunities I got while being in the school for 13 years have been tremendous. But it is the people I have met, memories I have made and life lessons I have learned that made it worthwhile. I went from knowing four people in the first grade to being the head girl for hundreds of them. Sanya, did you know that initially I too was one of those quiet kids who didn't get back much? Who knew that my gawky friends of AC, the silly jokes and ridiculous conversations would actually be of help to me? I never knew that those things, those memories would be preparing me today. I was never a speaker nor a multitasker, but time changed me. Challenges pushed me further to only make me better. Today, as a unanimously elected head boy, I have a sense of pride and confidence. And I thank each and every one for making my dreams into reality and an opportunity my great as victory. My journey at Sindhi High School can best be described by using the acronym LIFE. Learning, Innovation, Fine-Tuning, Experiences. Ups, Downs, Failures, Successes, it's been a package of breathtaking lives. An adventure of a lifetime best described by Coldplay. I must mention that my public speaking skills have improved by leaps and bounds. In retrospect, all this was only possible because our teachers were so encouraging and supportive in every action that we took. A pantomime of all the memories just strikes me. From teaching Saloni how to wink while playing killer to exchanging and hiding our identical school bags. Remember those sexy, crazy scenes when Gaurav's enthusiasm resulted in spilling off coke on our board? Or when the cupboard almost fell on Mega in class 6? I won't forget when Ayushi freaked out and jumped on Ankit HB upon spotting a monkey. The unforgettable chaotic pigeons that had made our classrooms their home and gave us the fright of our lives every now and then. But remember, it did succeed in, in its mission by finally dirtying Adish's head with its droppings. Who can forget those pointless talks during break? Or Vishal's surprise bag lunch boxes full of pani puri and sandwiches. I still remember Spurti's french fries getting over within the blink of an eye. 
remembering all of it just brings a smile on my face so has don't miss out on your papers that we emptied every day <laughs> Exposure I have got, the memories I have made, and the productivity of these 13 years will always remain indelibly imprinted in my heart, no matter which part of the world I go to. To me, the hardest thing would be saying goodbye. How lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard? Your words perfectly explain my feelings, Sharanya. But a lesson that we must carry forward is to prioritize ourselves. by looking into who we are and who we want to become don't spend time on anything that creates self doubt rather spend time by making yourself better discover a new better you and unlock the best habits today at this juncture let us promise each one of us let us promise each other to be friends even after stepping out thank you have a good day thank you dear children your beautiful thoughts will be cherished by all of us We are all stepping into a fascinating place called the world, which has things to learn in abundance. Keep exploring and never stop learning. We wish you all the very best. May you all rise and shine. There is a good reason to call the ceremonies commencement exercises. Graduation is not the end; it's the beginning. Goodbyes are only a new beginning and the opportunities for a new challenge. Every good beginning comes to an end. So it's time to say goodbye and farewell to the students of 10th standard. For the farewell address, I now invite a respected principal, Mrs. Devika Kiran Ma'am, to share her views, challenges, and her vision for the school with all of us. Over to you, Ma'am. Last week, when we had a office bearers meeting, President Sir asked me, Devika, how many minutes sir, should I speak? I gave the answer, sir. I am speaking for about five minutes. So he said, okay, you gave me a cue. So then that means I shall be speaking for about five minutes. So that means even I do have five minutes only to speak. I cannot speak more than five minutes. Namaste. Good evening, one and all present here. I quote Colin Powell, former United States Security. advisor there is no secret for success it is just the result of communication preparation hard work and learning from failures unquote at the outset i congratulate each and every class 10 student for their 13 years of schooling on this special occasion A hearty welcome to one and all present here. We are very fortunate to have Dr. Ali Khwaja for this momentous occasion. I am very thankful to Dr. Ali Khwaja, our president sir, and our parent Dr. Hari Kulkarni for their valuable advices given to our children. I am sure they will take it positively and move on in their lives. Our school, Sindhi High School, has laid a strong foundation to our students to aid them to build up their career. Curricular, co-curricular activities have given them values such as perseverance, generosity, perseverance, and many other values which they can take along with them and make their career. and challenge their future and today is we mark the golden era of our student which is coming to an end 13 years of schooling 156 months 4680 days of schooling you must be wondering i sat and calculated oh my god i never had such a long schooling in my life because every 3 years as mr kulkarni said every 3 years i would go to a different school but this is quite a long journey for our students 
my dear students this school has given you everything to you know challenge this future your future apj abdul kalam said you know birds are powered by their life and their motivation hard work self motivation self confidence is very very important to move on in life if you want to dream dream before your dreams come true if you want to shine like the sun first burn like the sun you know to have success in life is very very easy it's not at all difficult only everything is here and what you think about success is very important at this juncture i shall narrate a story so you must be wondering okay this is the fourth story probably this is the last story chill <laughs> This is a story. I mean, every other speaker has given you a story. Doesn't matter. This is one more story, which is a very, very good story and very motivating story. This is story of Rima. Please listen to it very, very carefully. It's a story of Miss Rima and her father. She is a teenager trying to pursue her masters, and and after the, her master, she wants to have. a very good the position in her life her father is a is an executive chef in a five star hotel mr vikram and very composed and he is a very you know balanced person but very rima is very very disturbed every other day she would come home and groaning and no patience and not talking to the parents and just going to her room inside and just shutting the door father kept watching what's happening to this my dear daughter reema so one fine day he called her out he asked reema what happened why are you so you know disturbing your life so then father said okay come on let me sit with you for some time and then he called her took her to the kitchen she wondered why is he taking her to the kitchen so he took her to the uh, kitchen uh, kitchen and he showed one potato she was she said what is there to see the potato then he took an egg then afterwards he took roasted ground beans you know then he told her just feed the potato she felt the potato she said i have seen it this is hard what about the egg she just held it i have eaten egg omelet she held it and shook it and said this is fragile that's all if i just touch it or no hit it on something it breaks then he showed roasted you know bean seeds coffee bean seeds it's ground also she just look at it what's there then after a while then he said he took three vessels so in three vessels he took water he put it on he kept it on three different burners he started you know boiling so water started boiling after you know then after it started boiling he put in one vessel potato the second vessel he put an egg in the third vessel he put coffee bean seeds ground roasted coffee bean seeds so then 20 minutes up then he turned the burners off then he took the potato out put it on a plate then the second one is the egg he took out and he put it on another plate but he could not take out the boil decoction coffee decoction it had turned into decoction what had turned dark brown so then he asked the dot daughter rima feel the potato and see she felt the potato then she said she come so that then she he asked her to feel egg she felt the egg and she said she shook it and she said it's become hard it was fragile now it has become hard the third one he could not say anything okay sip the sip that decoction of coffee and see 
she sipped the coffee and you know she tasted wow that's so nice so fragrant so what is the lesson here you know in life do you want to be a potato all the three are experiencing the same adversities all the three are experiencing the same adversities but each one is acting differently potato became soft egg became hard and coffee bean completely it turned the water and it gave completely a different shape to the water so it's all within you children how you react differently to situation that's what is very very important you can be a potato you are very very strong initially or do you want to become an egg or do you want to be a coffee seed that is ground which you can completely change your surrounding yes many things happen around us many things happens to us but what truly matters is what happens within us this that's very very important you should you know take life positively sindians do not dwell on failures sindians i'll repeat this sindians do not dwell on failures optimistic and move on with courage you will definitely succeed in life life is a collaborative effort of school and parents i am coming back to parents now a few points to the parents that's my experience i am a parent too yes so parents play a pivotal role Yes, children. Two more minutes. I said five minutes. Probably it's gone another two minutes more. Just last two minutes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Now what happens is parents play a pivotal role in child's life. Your support, your encouragement are very very important for your world. Parents, each child is unique. He can or she can succeed. in his way and in his field of success my strong belief is that every sindian has very good capability he will succeed in his life and he will reach the pinnacle of success dear parents know your worth support him always or her always love them motivate them and most of all appreciate them for whatever job they do whatever small job they do and one more thing very importantly do not compare one child with the other do not compare one child with the other last but not the least have at least one meal a day together with your family the family which dines together always stays together that's very very important for a family okay children uh, today you have been given a hoodie a lapel pin and a book written by richard carlson do not sweat out the small things another thing is graduation day folder so these are all mementos from the school cherish these memories lead to a new beginning carry forward the sindian legacy before i conclude i let me leave you with a small wonderful message which is in the form of a poem written by john gilbert you can be what you want to be and you do what you want to do you can be what you want to be and do what you want to do 
nothing is very difficult and impossible for you nothing is very difficult and impossible for you stars are just a step away and the goals you would achieve stars are just a step away and the goals you would achieve stars are just a step away and the goals you would achieve are at your fingertips are just at your fingertips only if you just believe in yourself only if you just believe in yourself thank you may sindhu jyoti lead you to the path of success may lord almighty give you all the strength believe in him believe in your abilities all the best for your forthcoming upcoming board exam and your bright future thank you have a great evening children thank you ma'am for presenting your visions we reiterate that we are committed to the vision and will ensure the school achieve its goal on time and smoothly dear students don't let the noise of other opinions drown your inner voice and most importantly have the courage to follow your heart and intuition this is a major step in the journey of your lives one that should be recognized for its immense significance it is an act not only of personal commitment but also one of pride you all worked hard to get to this day a high school certificate is a wonderful tool in this world one that opens many doors of opportunity for anyone who is lucky enough to have one but graduation is not an end goal in itself it is instead a part of the larger journey of life wherever your future takes you let it take you somewhere life is a journey and all accomplishments we achieve during its course should be taken as starting points for further achievements your graduation should serve as such a launching point projecting you to wherever your futures are meant to take you but before we can begin to reach for stars as i said before life is a journey we now move to the most important formal ceremony of the evening the graduation ceremony seated amongst you are the sindians full of hopes and desires and dreams dressed in the best with eagerness in their eyes and a restless spirit to go ahead and achieve and overcome the challenges as they get ready to bid adieu to the alma mater that has nurtured and molded the foundation the chrysalis is ready to be transformed into a colorful butterfly may i request the chief guest dr ali khwaja president sir shri madan dalatram chairman sir shri sanjeev sanjeev atmaram principal devika ma'am to light the lamp for the outgoing students
Graduation ceremony of Taitri Upanishad of Krishna Yajurveda. Vice Principal Alpana Ma'am, my colleagues Ms. Veena, Ms. Saupani, Ms. Manjulavani, and Ms. Sublakshmi are requested to take over the proceedings.
comes the final instruction which students in those days received when they completed their study under the teacher. The following is the full text of that instruction which corresponds to the convocation addresses of modern times delivered at the universities to students who are given their degrees at the end of their studies. After expounding the Veda, the teacher enjoins the disciple thus, Speak the truth, practice virtue, do not neglect the Veda that has been studied. Having brought to the teacher the wealth that is pleasing to him, do not cut off the line of progeny. Let there be no neglect of truth, let there be no neglect of virtue, let there be no neglect of welfare, let there be no neglect of prosperity, let there be no neglect of the Veda that has been studied and its teaching, let there be no neglect of what is due to gods and to departed forefathers. one to whom mother is a god be one to whom father is a god be one to whom teacher is a god be one to whom guest is a god Whatever deeds are blameless, be devoted to them, not to others. Whatever good customs there are among us, they have to be adopted by you, not others. Whatever Brahmanas there may be who are superior to us, they should be comforted by you by giving them a seed. Gifts should be given with faith, should not be given without faith, should be given in plenty, should be given with modesty, should be given with fear, should be given with sympathy. <laughs> Then, if there is in you 
any doubt regarding rights and any doubt regarding conduct you should conduct yourself in those cases in such a way in which those brahmanas who may be living there who are competent to judge dedicated to good deeds not led by others not cruel and are lovers of virtue conduct themselves in those cases in respect of persons who are accused of sin you should conduct yourself in such a way in which those brahmanas who may be living there who are competent to judge dedicated to good deeds not led by others not cruel and are lovers of virtue conduct themselves in respect of such persons is the command this is the teaching this is the secret meaning of the vedas this is the instruction thus should one worship thus indeed should one worship shanno mitra shambharunah shanno bhavatvaryam shanna indro brahaspatihi shanno Thank you ladies may i now invite the school head boy suhas jatwani and school head girl charanya venkatesh to administer the oath to the students We, the outgoing Sindhians, we, the outgoing Sindhians, solemnly promise, solemnly promise to abide, to abide by our noble motto, by our noble motto, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, which means, which means, from darkness unto light, from darkness unto light, to the best of our ability, to the best of our ability, all our life, all our life. We promise to dispel. We promise to dispel the darkness of ignorance. The darkness of ignorance. And light the lamp of knowledge. And light the lamp of knowledge among our fellow beings. Among our fellow beings. 
that remain, remain noble sons and daughters noble sons and daughters of our motherland of our motherland we promise to be loyal we promise to be loyal to this beloved institution which has made us what we are which has made us what we are and be bound to her and be bound to her all our life all our life will now recite the sadhana panchaka written by adi shankara acharya which is a combination of the 40 do's and don'ts for a person to attain serenity which is the ultimate goal of human life on earth vedo nitya madiyatam tadudetam कर्म स्वुष्टीयता विधीयता अपचि काजता पापौगरीदूयता सुखे दोषोनुसंधीयता आत्मे व्यवसीयता पूर्ण विनिर्गम्यता Let us expound the sacred scriptures and perform the deeds prescribed in them. Let us give up the desire-based deeds and destroy the sin. Let us be firm, set the path of self-realization, and discard worldly pleasures. Sangat sat subhi adam bhagavato bhakte dradi adam. शांतिपरिचीयता दृढ़तर कर्माशु सत्यजता सद्वान्पसत्यता प्रतिदिन तत्दुका सेव्यता ब्रह्मक्षरमता श्रुतिशिरो वाक्यम सकर्ण्यता We shall aspire to attain serenity and contentment. Let us draw good thoughts and seek a pious and serious teacher to serve. Let the supreme reality be worshipped. Vakyaatasya vicharetam. Let us discuss the great sayings in the scriptures and follow only the trodden path of dharma. Let us debate only those issues which are conducive for the spiritual growth of man. Let us experience the highest state. Thou art that. Let pride be given up, selfishness ousted, and arguing with the pious stop.
Let us curb the disease of desire with the medicine of arms. Let us not desire for delicious food, but be satisfied with what we get. Let us discard all those in the path of our salvation. Let us tolerate all the contradictions of life and use our speech with discretion. serene in solitude, resting our mind in the divine. Let us perceive the supreme reality, consider the world an illusion, destroy the deeds of the past, let not the deeds of the present become cause for the next birth, let the fruits of the deeds, good and bad, be experienced here, let us merge with the supreme. May I request a chief guest and executives to kindly join for a group photograph with the outgoing batch of students? Thank you, sirs. Thank you, ma'am. The time to pass out of this very portal through which eminent citizens of this country passed out before you all has finally arrived. Dear students, today is a day of milestones for you and your families. After today, when you leave the protection of this school, the community of your friends and teachers to find and forge new communities of your own. Who knows where your individual paths will take you in the world beyond SHS. I exhort you to be ready for the many opportunities and challenges of post-school life. I want you to reflect on the wonderful moments and the distinctive kind of education that this institution has provided you to shape you all to take up opportunities and challenges. When asked about the virtues of this school, I would resoundingly say that you have the spirit truly unlike and will assemble in the second floor corridor. As you pass on, please remember these lines from Tirukkurul, a classic Tamil text. Smile, charity, pleasant words and civility. These four are marks of true nobility. Dig deeper the sand well, more water flows. Read deeper, more wisdom grows. Ladies and gentlemen, may I request you all to rise as the recession commences.
with this a graduation ceremony comes to an end we thank you all for gracing this occasion it has been a pleasure to have you here kindly rise for the national anthem please jai hind bharat bhagya vidhata punjab sindh gujarat maratha dravida utkala banga हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जगधी तरंगा तब शुभ नाम जागे तब शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तब जय गाथा जन गण मंगल गायक जय हे 